My dear friends, Elijah is one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. We can remember that in the scene of the Transfiguration, two very important characters appeared near Jesus. One of them was Moses, the giver of the law, and the second one was Elijah, the prophet that is mentioned in the first reading of today. Elijah is in some sense like, like the image, the pure image of what a prophet should be like. A real prophet, that is Elijah. And there are several reasons why Elijah is so important, so relevant in the Old Testament. One of them is, is that he was almost alone in defending the true faith, defending the true faith before the king, defending the true faith before the people, defending the true faith before his persecutors. So he really stood his land. He remained faithful. And that is great because he was so attacked, so persecuted, and he was alone. That's one of the reasons to recognize Elijah as one of the greatest prophets. Second reason appears in the first reading of today. This is chapter 18 of the first book of Kings. This is the prophet that really stood before the people and ask the crucial question, how long will you struggle the issue? Situation was that people had a divided heart. So in some sense, they tried to keep the old faith, the faith in Yahweh, the faith of Moses, the faith of old, in some sense they were trying to keep that, but at the same time, they were simply fascinated, fascinated by the gods of Canaan. And these gods received the general term of Baal, the Baals, different gods, the expression Baal, means a god. So they had several gods. And it is important to remember that Baal is a common name so that it has the possibility of naming different gods because that was exactly the situation in Elijah's time. I mean, everyone was following his or her own god, which is the proper situation, which is exactly the situation in paganism. Each one following his own or her own appetite, desire, preference, they are following their own gods. In that sense, paganism does not fight with anyone. You have your god, okay, follow your god. Your neighbor has a different God, okay, that person will follow her God and the other his God and no quarrel, no discussion, no problem. Just follow your appetite, follow your desire, follow your preference. So it is, it is very, in, in that sense, it is very convenient. Paganism is very convenient because there's no fight, no quarrel, no discussion. 
Just follow your God and I will follow my God. And there's no problem between us. And that was the strategy that the king of that time in Israel, which was the kingdom of the northern part of the, of the promised land, Ahab, who was the king at that time, took that strategy. Let's not fight about this. Let's not fight about religion. You follow your Baal, the other follows his Baal. No problem, no quarrel, no discussion. On the contrary, to follow the true God becomes problematic. Because following the true God implies that not everything is correct and not everyone is right. And of course, this entails discussion and tension and probably some quarrel. That was the situation. But people were not able, was not able to discern and to decide. It is very impressive, this part of the passage that we heard. If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. Problem is that Baal was not just one God. That's a common name, as I said. If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. Did not answer. So they preferred to stay in doubt and to stay in the very convenient situation of choosing the appropriate Baal according to their time, according to the trend, according to their preference or their need at that occasion. So this is a fight for the true faith, something that we need nowadays as well, because paganism is making a powerful coming back to our culture, my friends. Paganism is very much alive in this time. Because, again, I repeat myself, it is very convenient to keep the ball of each and every one. And there's no fight and there's no quarrel. So Elijah tests the people, but they have no answer. No answer at all. So Elijah, guided by the Holy Spirit, prepares this test, this public and very spectacular test. And it all happened on Mount Carmel. Yes, this is the same Mount Carmel that we have heard related to the Carmelites. You remember St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, they all belong to the spirituality that was born, so to speak, on Mount Carmel. And Elijah is a very important figure, a very important character for the Carmelite spirituality. This was the test. And the test, in the simplest form we can express it, saying it is about fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. It impacts me what we have heard here. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears as was their custom until blood gushed over them. But there was not a sound. No one answered. No one was listening. This is the true face of paganism. There's no sound. There's no answer. There's no one listening. There's no one listening. It is you with your thoughts. It is you with your mind. It is you with your brain. It is you with your words. It is you with yourself. There's no one listening. There's no one listening. That's the true face of paganism. 
The true God listens. The true God is welcoming and receiving, receiving as, welcoming as, and receiving and listening to our petitions. And then fire from heaven. Fire from heaven that means accepting the sacrifice. Fire from heaven that means that he was, that the true God is listening. And I would like to, to underline these two thoughts coming to the finish of this homily. First, our God, the true God, listens. You are not alone. You are not just speaking to yourself. You're not alone with your thoughts. This is important to be said, my friends, because nowadays there's a coming back of paganism, as I said, and also we have the situation of Buddhism. And many people are spreading the word about meditation, but what they understand of meditation is not the classical meaning of meditation in Christian faith. In our Christian faith, meditation is the deep and serious consideration of the Word of God. That is meditation in the language of Christian faith. Meditation in terms of Buddhism or in terms of the New Age or in terms of the new paganism. Meditation is all about you with your brain, we, you, with the waves of your brain, the alpha waves, the beta, beta brains, the gamma waves of your brain. It is you with your brain, but no one is listening. No one is listening. There's nobody. It is just you with yourself. The true God listens. I heard the cry of my people, says the Lord in Exodus chapter 3. I heard the cry of my people. He listens. That's the true God. And we have to go to the true God and present our hearts and our petitions with the certainty that he is truly listening. And each one of us, if we are believers, we have proof, clear proof that this is true. This is not an, our imagination. This is not about me with my imagination, with my fantasy. No, it is the true God, the one who listens and who answers. And the second thought, in closing, the second word is fire from heaven. You remember Pentecost? What did happen in Pentecost? There were like tongues of fire descending from heaven. Not to consume a dead animal, but to give life to living Christians. In that case, the apostles, but also each one of us. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven, Pentecost, is like the continuation of the sacrifice of Elijah. Elijah's sacrifice has a continuation in the New Testament, and that continuation is all about fire from heaven, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that gift of the Holy Spirit makes of you a living sacrifice, as we read in chapter 12 of the letter to the Romans. You and me, you and I are living sacrifices because we have received fire from heaven and the gift of the Holy Spirit is transforming us not only in believers but also in witnesses to the true God. Amen.